Hello everyone and welcome to the Bandit's Den. First order of business today, I looked at the 28 day metric on my uh, subscriber count and my gains for the last 28 days is actually in the green. For the last year, it's been in the red. For those of you who have been around for a while, um, you understand why this is and I appreciate you sticking with me and um, accepting me for who I am through all of my life changes. For those of you who are new, <clears throat> I'll explain why this is as quickly as I can. It's because this channel is now something completely different from what it was. I have been changing my world perspective and improving myself for the better. And a lot of people really don't like to see that because my old channel, the entire premise was to feed people's addiction to outrage, essentially. Yeah, I had some funny or quirky videos here and there, but probably 95% of my content at least was all about uh, feeding into an outrage cycle. So that's not what this is anymore. Um, yeah, so let's get into the video. All right. This video is going to be about the most common and best uh, arguments against me being vegan from people around me in real life. And these are points that I've had to discuss with people repeatedly because, because I'm 1% of the population and the other 99% of the population just don't understand. You know, in some cases, people are actually being malicious, but in other cases, people just really don't get it and they want to know more. Unfortunately, the people attempting to be malicious, at least um, around me in real life, um, outnumber the people who are actually curious and want to be educated on these points. So anyways, let's get into it. Of course, the most common one is protein, though. Where do you get your protein? Because even um, strangers that I talk to, uh, they're the ones that mostly want to get educated. It's people I spend more time around who are omnivores that start becoming malicious against uh, me being vegan. But strangers I run into, um, they... They seem to be under the impression that I just went vegan yesterday or last week or maybe last month and I haven't started to manifest the, the serious weight loss and weakening that veganism causes people, right? Because look at me, I have straighter and more square shoulders than most omnivores I've met. Um... Because really, most people in this country are not very healthy. 70% of the people in this country are either overweight or obese. So, um, people just can't believe that you can look like this and be vegan long term. So, the thing is, I actually get more protein on a normal day than I used to as an omnivore. And part of that is because I drink a high protein uh, meal replacement for breakfast because it's easy. I don't have to cook it, just mix it with water and bam, you get 100 grams of protein and 1000 calories to start your day with in addition to just about every nutrient the body could need. And it's all made out of plants. It's a vegan meal replacement. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, for my snack, I eat two or three cups of tree nuts. And then for lunch, I'll eat all kinds of fruit. And then for dinner, I'll eat maybe, you know, 30 to 50 grams of protein and whatever I choose to eat. So I eat a fuck ton of protein, sometimes 200 or more grams a day. And it's all plant-based. Uh, looking at some of the old stuff I used to eat when I was an omnivore, I would get maybe 100, 120 grams a day of protein. Right now, I average maybe 150, 160. So I am actually consuming just about enough protein to be a bodybuilder. So a lot of that protein I just shit out, and it's probably not good for me to eat that much protein. But the diet I'm on is better than what I used to be anyways. So it's not a really big concern to me. Besides, I'm doing it for the animals. I, ne I never intended it when I first did it. 
I thought I was going to be less healthy, and I was ready to do that for the animals, but it turns out I can actually be healthier than I was, and still be doing it for the animals, which is fucking fantastic. So, um, the thing is, people think that animals are the only thing that have protein, that they, like, magically create protein. No, uh, animal flesh is just composed of all of the proteins that are found in their food. It's just, they're just all lumped together in one neat package called meat or rotting flesh, is what a lot of people like to call it, because that's what it is. It's a corpse. So... All of those proteins can be found in plants and can be consumed in plants. Some plants have a complete amino acid profile, others don't, and you can just mix and match them and be just as healthy anyways. So another argument is uh, we are omnivores. And this is kind of a difficult one to argue against, um, but in the end it, it becomes... Because I, I really don't think, after reading a lot of stuff, uh, I really don't think that we are omnivores. Our mouths aren't like other omnivores in nature. Our digestive systems are longer and more efficient at digesting plant foods than most omnivores on this planet. And uh, our, digestive system are, our digestive systems and mouths are most similar to... Uh, what some people call frugivores, which are like herbivores, but mostly select high-calorie plant foods from their environment, like tubers, fruits, vegetables, and grains, and tree nuts, and stuff. So that's essentially what a frugivore is. High-calorie plant foods um, is what they eat. And so that's what I believe uh, nowadays that humans are. I mean, look at it. Our saliva is specially engineered through evolution to uh, specifically target starchy foods. And those are high-calorie plant foods. Starchy foods are 80% digested by the time you swallow it because our saliva is specialized for starchy foods. Which is one reason why I don't get the low-carb diet. It's like, well, carbs are what you're meant to eat. Really. Uh, 97% of carbs will be used for energy when you consume them the other three percent are stored whereas animal fat if you're eating animal fat along with um, your carbs the thing is your body will burn the carbs and store the animal fat so what people have to do is a keto diet in order to uh, consume as much animal fat as they want and not get obese and uh, that's why the keto diet catches on Because people don't want to give up their meat, but they're completely fine giving up bread. They'd rather give up bread than giving up meat. And they'd rather give up potatoes than giving up dead bodies, right? So what you do is force your body into a starvation mode that uh, forces it to expend extra energy to convert animal fat into usable energy. So it's it's a really uh, really inefficient thing going on inside of your body. Right. So anyways, um, before we get too tangential, uh, even when the other party refuses to put down the idea that we are omnivores and not frugivores, um, after I talk to them about all of that shit, they insist we're omnivores. I'll say, okay, well, still, omnivores do have a choice because they're capable of eating both... um, animal food both animal products and plant products right and so you still have a choice you can still get everything you need from plants instead of harming innocent defenseless creatures that are smaller than us a lot in a lot of cases i mean these creatures they don't have any way to defend themselves and in a lot of cases they actually trust us they trust the farmer until the farmer sends them off to their death it's the ultimate betrayal. So anyways, the next argument is pretty common in my area because I live in a very Christian-dominated part of the country. It's more, um, I, I consider Catholics to be Christian. They believe in just about all the same stuff except, except for um, a few things, you know. 
I don't want to get into all of the differences, but it's, it's very Christian and Catholic influenced, the region I live in. And it's different because it's Spanish. Um, it's not like Bible Belt uh, Baptist kind of shit. It's, um, it's Hispanic. Hispanic Christianity influenced. So anyways, um, yeah, this argument, people pretty much tell me that God said it's uh, okay to eat animals. And I tell them, well, to read the book of Daniel, one guy got so pissed off that he uh, lied to me and told me there is no book of Daniel in the Bible. He told me I'm reading the wrong Bible if there's a book of Daniel in it. There is a book of Daniel. And what happened was um, Daniel's people uh, started eating a plant-based diet for 10 days and they came out of it healthier than Nebuchadnezzar's people who were eating rich food, also known as animal products, because that's what rich people ate back then. And uh, they decided to continue eating a plant-based diet. It doesn't ever say they stopped. But also, um, the most defining evidence of God not saying uh, to eat animals, but instead saying to eat plant foods, is the first book of the first chapter of the Bible, Genesis. You know, it says something to the effect of, and I'm paraphrasing here, that God said to man, I have given you every seed-bearing plant and every fruit-bearing uh, tree that has seed inside of the fruit that you may have them for food. That's all it says about food is that we are to eat plants. It doesn't say we are to take all of his um, mobile creations and destroy them and eat them. It doesn't say anything like that. It says, yes, we have dominion over the world. But that, that just means we have control over it, that we're caretakers of it. And it says to eat plants. It doesn't say to eat animals. So, you know, the Bible does indeed contradict itself a lot. And that's the thing that a lot of these people who make this argument don't realize. Is they can quote something about God wanting a guy to sacrifice a goat to him. Or whatever. And uh, think that overrides the first chapter of the first book of the Bible. Just because they want it to. Um, and yeah, that is... It is self-contradictory, but for those of you who aren't into this stuff, that's my argument. And uh, besides, the only diet that is compliant under every religion is a vegan diet. That's the only diet that every single religious following can eat without um, going against what their religion says, right? In a vegan diet, you don't eat any pork, so Muslims and Jews are okay. You don't eat any shellfish, so Muslims and Jews are okay. You know, there's nothing in the Bible that says you have to eat animals. It says to eat plants in the first chapter of the first book, so you're good there. Um, Hindus don't eat cows. Well, there are no cows in a vegan diet. There's no cow products even so they don't even have to worry about aborting the babies so that they can milk the cows in order to make cheese and dairy products out of you know and um what else uh there's there's some other uh there's something else i don't know even if you're a, a traditional american you know man's best friend you don't have to eat man's best friend on a vegan diet there is no dog meat in a vegan diet so you don't have to worry about having to do what people in Asian countries do and eat dogs. You know, so so it's it's actually despite what every despite all of the shit I get for being vegan, it's actually the most culturally appropriate and spiritually appropriate diet anybody can eat is a vegan diet. So anyways, moving on. People claim that we need cholesterol, choline and creatine from animal products and that that's the only place we can get them. Well, um, you may be surprised, but we create our own cholesterol, choline, and creatine. The only problem with choline is our bodies don't produce enough um, alone. So you can get it from vegetables. So you can supplement the choline that your body creates with vegetables. But your body creates its own creatine. 
It's just uh, bodybuilders that want to make their muscles look bigger than they are that are worried about creatine. So they get um, animal-based creatine supplements and they eat all the red meat they can and clog up their arteries so they can die from a heart attack at 50 but look goddamn good while they do it. And uh, cholesterol is what your body creates out of saturated fats and uh, fats that, that you consume from other foods. And, you know, avocado has plenty of fats in it. Tree nuts have plenty of fats in them. And uh, for anybody that thinks that those crops aren't as sustainable as uh, animal products, well, you're full of shit. Uh, see, the thing is, 16 calories of grain go into creating one calorie of plant foods. And so you uh, multiply what you're eating by 16 and that's how much was needed to create that food that you're eating. Not to mention all of the water that was used to water those crops in addition to the animal that you ate. That's a lot of water. That's a lot of land use. That's a lot of food and petrochemicals being used in order to transport that food to the animal and then all of the uh, energy used to um, keep that animal's corpse refrigerated while delivering it to the grocery store in order to keep it refrigerated, all the petrochemicals used in order to transport it in a, in a reefer, um, a reefer truck, man, all kinds of crazy and efficient. Not to mention, um, you can create cholesterol and creatine and most of your choline with your own body without having to kill anybody. So that's fantastic. So um, no real argument there. Not a very good argument. Another argument people use is ancestors, though. Or, um, or it's, it's cultural for us to hunt. And I get this one a lot from Native Americans that want to um, try to criticize me for being vegan. They say, oh, well, it's... It's unreasonable for you to be vegan around me because that's offensive. Because it's like you're saying that my ancestors were wrong for hunting. It's like, okay, well, apparently your ancestors were humans. Because every fucking, everybody's ancestors used to hunt. It's not, it's not something special to Native Americans. It's a lot like uh, when Natives t tell me about, oh, how they... Uh, they like to ride horses because that's what their ancestors always did. No, the uh, Spanish actually brought the horses over. So so um, they didn't always do that. There weren't horses in North America until the Spanish came and started chopping people's feet off and stuff. All right, so... So yeah, everybody's ancestors hunted, and that was out of necessity in a lot of cases. They needed to hunt in order to supplement their food. And, um, you know, another one that ties into this is we've been doing it for ages. And, you know, with these two, it's like, you, what they don't realize is that our ancestors all across human history, except for people that uh, live in, in the polar regions, you know, like, uh, I can't think of their name, the nomadic tribes that, like in Mongolia, that herd reindeer, and then over here in the U.S., the Eskimo and stuff, well, yeah, they need to eat a lot of uh, animal products because shit doesn't grow up there all year round. You know, it's hard, it's hard to get plant-based foods all year round when you're a nomadic fucking tribesman in, in some Arctic area. All right. So, I mean, they get a pass, but that all those people amount to like 250,000 people across the world out of 7 billion. So it's not a huge number to really worry about, I think. Um, but other than them, all of our ancestors were pretty plant based. And archaeologists have been finding this that there's a lot of uh, plant material in the digestive systems of like mummies and people who were preserved in um, glaciers and stuff. They look in there and most of it is plant foods. And the reason for this is, well, there was no refrigeration back in the day. There was no way to refrigerate your food. So the only reason we eat 
animal products every single day here is because we're able to refrigerate and freeze our food at will. I mean, this is a pretty recent development in the last hundred years. Prior to that, people ate mostly plant foods because they were the easiest to preserve. Um, you could just dry out plant foods and uh, hold them for a year or two. And so that was uh, the most common eaten food back then. Uh, so anyways, uh, that, that was... Uh, Another one is um, another really common argument against veganism. Oh, shit. Another really common argument against veganism that people try to tell me is anecdotes from their family or news articles about people who failed in the diet or even uh, content producers that they've seen, content creators they've seen that are now ex-vegan for this or that fucking reason. And uh, I was watching Mike the Vegan one time about this, about specifically the uh, content creators that go ex-vegan. And uh, their miraculous cures um, after going back to consuming animal products happening within like an hour of going back to consuming animal products um, can most likely be chalked up to a psychological issue. Which I can understand now that I've been vegan for over a year and just about everybody I I uh, spend time with during the day, um, like at work and stuff, are totally against me. Um, it's, uh, it's psychologically trying, really. And I've dealt with some rough times in, in the last year. Uh, feeling isolated, uh, like everyone's against me. Feeling like I'm cornered, uh, you know... I had trouble getting to work every day um, for the last few months at my last job because it, it's just so difficult um, to deal with sometimes when people shove this food in your face that you think is ethically wrong and uh, make fun of you for what you don't eat and make fun of you for products you don't buy. And everybody's against you. And, you know, I don't mind educating people on these matters when they bring them up and they, they're really curious to find out the answers to these things. Um, but when people come in a malicious way, which is most of the time when people want to talk to me about it, um, they want to troll me and they want to fuck with me and talk shit. And uh, try to hurt my feelings and stuff because I'm vegan. And, you know, it, it, it really gets to you after a while. So I can understand these people, you know, they uh, finally eat animal products after a couple of years of being vegan. And they, they just feel this, like, mental release from, like, oh, now I'm not going to be chastised every fucking day anymore. You know? And I imagine that's that's what's going on. It's not some miracle nutrient that we haven't discovered yet in animal products that we need that plants don't have i think it's all a psychological thing going on there um but anyways uh a lot of the familial anecdotes i hear are like oh my nephew or my cousin or whoever tried tried that vegan diet that you're on they try to they tried to just eat plants and they got extremely ill after a couple of months or they were passing out all the time and they lost all kinds of weight and blah, 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 all this crap. Well, the funny thing is they find out I've been vegan for a lot longer than their family member or friend and uh, their jaws just drop. Like, they don't know what to say because I've, I did my research I found out how many calories are in all the stuff I eat and built a, uh, cause I thought whole food, I thought whole food plant-based was the only way to, to eat food and be a vegan, right? I thought whole food plant-based was the only way. So I was eating fuck tons of beans, fuck tons of rice and quinoa and, uh, lots of fruit and vegetables and just stuffing myself all the time. And, um, you know, that is a very healthy diet, 
but it's very difficult to get uh, calories in that way without getting too expensive like buying ex expensive high calorie stuff like eating fuck tons of avocados and stuff um, it's hard to meet your caloric needs when you work construction and you have to hit a minimum of 3,500 or uh, 3,050 calories a day otherwise you start losing weight you know it's difficult but I did my research I found out the most basic shit that I need to eat in order to survive and the quantities of that and I ate it it was pretty simple you know you can't just eat salad and celery and raw carrots all fucking day and survive on that kind of vegan diet. No, you're going to be calorie deficient and you're going to end up just like all of these people's family members that start losing fuck tons of weight and passing out all over the place. You know, you need to calculate your uh, calories if you're just going to eat a bunch of a bunch of uh, raw plant foods like that. You know, I would have to eat something like 23 heads of lettuce a day in order to meet my minimum calories if I'm just eating salad. 23 fucking heads of lettuce a day to meet my calories. It's like, no, that's too much. That's pretty much physically impossible. So, I, uh, yeah, I, that's, that's the only way these people can be doing this is they're on a fucking starvation diet. They, they come out of it looking like um, concentration camp victims, really. And it's because they're not eating enough. That's the problem. Like that Onision guy. He claimed that uh, Freely the Banana Girl um, fucked him up or whatever. But she said to eat like 20 bananas and he ate one instead. He said, oh, she said to eat, you know, this many bananas, like 10 bananas or something for breakfast. And, oh, that's just ridiculous. Who really does that? I'm just going to eat one. Well, of course, you started losing all kinds of weight and feeling like shit and having pain. Because you were starving to death. You know, you were eating like 500 calories a day. Of course, you felt like shit. Of course, you lost a lot of weight and you were in pain. Because your body was dying. Because you weren't feeding it enough. You know, these people, man. And then news anecdotes like that. That those people that killed their kid by feeding feeding it uh, raw foods and not feeding it enough calories. Well, yeah, if you feed a toddler not enough calories to, to live off of and grow, they're going to die. You know, if you force somebody who can't even communicate to you how they're feeling properly if any have them on our starvation diet eventually they're gonna die that's just how it is i mean it was bad parenting is what it was i mean you know i i could blame an omnivore diet for that little girl that was killed by her parents she was like eight years old and she wasn't getting the grades they wanted in school or something and so they decided to give her a water punish treatment Right, they they made her sit in the corner and drink, drink water and keep drinking and drinking and drinking water. They had her drink like four gallons of water and then she fucking died. Well, you know, water was part of their omnivore diet, so you feed your kid too much of something and they fucking die. Well, that must mean that an omnivore diet is fucking terrible for you and it kills kids. So, anyways. Um, another one is phytoestrogens, and this is an argument I used against veganism in the past. And a few people have brought it up to me, and this one just stands out because this is one I was hardcore about. Uh, I didn't want to use any canola oil. I still don't because because of the practices with, with farming canola. I, I don't really agree with it. I, uh, but... I would avoid canola oil because of phytoestrogens. I would avoid anything with soy because of phytoestrogens. And I was under the impression that um, Soylent, the soy-based meal replacement that's like Huel, just it's made of soy instead of oats and peas. Um, uh, I was drinking like 80 or 90% of my calories of Soylent and... 
I was having some serious uh, emotional issues, but at the same time, I was working at a warehouse night shift, which I don't get along well with night shift, and I was doing that for the whole seven or eight months. I was drinking mostly Soylent, and um, and I, management was terrible and spiraling out of control and starting to take away our lunches on 10-hour shifts and not letting anybody take any breaks at all for 10 hours. You know, much like the uh, YouTubers that that blame it on the diet uh, causing these mental problems, um, I was blaming Soylent, the phytoestrogens of Soylent, on my attitude toward life when my life was fucking shit, really. So, phytoestrogens aren't really a big issue. Um... Now, uh, now that I look at it from this perspective, you see, cheese and dairy and a lot of meats have mammalian estrogens in them. And that those are the estrogens that our bodies use and absorb more readily than uh, phytoestrogens. Phytoestrogens are plant estrogens, right? They're made for plants, you know. And mammalian estrogens are made by and for mammals, and see, the thing is, a lot of meat has it because a lot of the uh, animals we're eating are females. So they na have naturally higher mammalian estrogen levels than the uh, male body makeup, the human male body makeup, right? And so you absorb more mammalian estrogens than your body is creating normally. So you increase your levels there, you know. And milk has a lot of mammalian estrogens in it, and so does cheese as a result of um, being made of milk. So there's been a lot of studies that I've looked at that show that vegans actually have higher testosterone, uh, male vegans have higher testosterone and lower estrogen levels than their omnivore counterparts, even healthy ones, you know. So, and, and it's a statistically significant difference too. And so here's an anecdote for you, I guess. Um, about a month after I was vegan, my libido skyrocketed. I was horny all the fucking time. And also I was ready to fight just about anybody. And you guys know I'm in recovery. Getting in fights with people is not conductive to a recovery mentality. And so I had to rein myself in all the time. And uh, I attribute that to an increase in testosterone. Maybe I'm one of those who, who had a bigger jump, you know, one of the higher parts of the average, you know, in differences. I haven't got my blood tested, but that's just what I'm guessing. Because <clears throat> I was extremely horny all the time, pretty aggressive mentally, and uh, I, had to, um, I had to rein that in. And eventually I got used to it. Now, uh, I've just, uh, being in this mindset, you know, cause you get used to, um, changes in your mentality, changes in your energy levels and stuff. Cause my, my energy levels just skyrocketed as far as aggression and libido goes. I wanted to fight or fuck constantly, you know, and after being in, in that for so long eventually i figured out ways to deal with it and calm down calm down and not need not feel the need to reproduce constantly and uh yeah i've reined it in pretty good over the last year and i'm i'm a lot more chill and uh not so damn horny all the time um i'm i've brought it down to just about how i used to be um but yeah, that anecdote aside, the thing is, phytoestrogens are not as easily um, processed by your body and assumed into your physiology as, uh, as mammalian estrogens are. So watch out for those mammalian estrogens. Um, if you drink a lot of milk, stop it. You're not a baby cow, first of all. Second of all, it's severely increasing your estrogen levels. And uh, stop eating cheese because that's just... <clears throat> rotten breast milk from another species that's pretty gross 
Um, so, <coughs> excuse me, it's uh, there's a uh, raging wildfire in Arizona, and yeah, the smoke is pretty thick here in Albuquerque, so excuse me for getting congested. My uh, eyes were on fire this morning, and I couldn't figure out why. I was like, why do my eyes burn so much? Did I, like, roll over in a fucking jalapeno field or some shit? And I looked outside, and... I couldn't even see the mountains. You can usually see them nice and clear from my house, but no mountains. Couldn't couldn't hardly see, you know, a mile away because the smoke is so thick. It's a goddamn bummer. It's a tragedy. Uh, all these fires that keep happening year after year. So, anyways, my favorite, my favorite argument against veganism. That's. That's so stupid. Uh, it's like the last ditch effort by omnivores to prove to me that I'm a terrible fucking person for being vegan. Plants feel pain or are conscious. You know, people love this one. I get it so much. Oh, what about the plants though? You know, and I've, I've shortened it. Over time, I've shortened it because people don't have the attention span to get told, told what's up. You know? Because as I'm digging into exactly why they're fucking wrong um, to even say something so stupid, uh, you know, they start losing their interest because they know they're going to fucking lose. And they hear me laying out all this shit and they're like, oh, Jesus Christ, you know. But <clears throat> I've shortened it significantly to just asking them, do you... Do you think animals just magically appear on this planet or what? Like, we have to feed these animals plants. Lots and lots of plants. And so that means you're killing, as an omnivore, you're killing way more plants than I do on a vegan diet. And so if plant lives are so important to you, well, going vegan is the only option. If you care about plants so fucking much, you want to reduce how many plants we have to kill, well, stop paying for animals to be fed all of those plants so that you can uh, have your 1 to 16 calorie ratio uh, meat, all right? So, <clears throat> you know, the thing is that uh, plants don't feel pain. They're not conscious anyways. You know, and... Sure, plant lives, maybe, yeah, I guess they do matter. Uh, especially all of the forests that we've cut down in order to grow crops so that we can feed all of our livestock. You know, 75% of deforestation is because of livestock. And all the, all the grains and crap, all the grains and grass and shit that we grow for our livestock. So we could eliminate almost 75% of our... Uh, of our agricultural lands and let them rewild if uh, people would just stop uh, fucking with animals. Just leave the animals alone, you know? And you could let all those, all those wild plants grow back and it would be fucking fern gully all over again. <coughs> but plants don't feel pain. They don't have a central nervous system. They don't have nerves or a brain. They don't have an ability to think or feel anything, really. And everything that they react to is simply a chemical reaction. Even that sensitive plant that when you touch it, 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 it curls up and, and uh, moves its branches like this, you know, and closes its leaves. That sensitive plant is just a chemical reaction to touch, is the thing. And uh, they're most certainly not conscious. I... Uh, I worked with a guy that insisted one time that there are underwater plants that actually run away from danger. And I told him, well, show me a video of that happening uh, where it's not just waves pushing the plant away from somebody's hand. And uh, maybe we'll look more into this. And he never, he never showed me anything like that. And I even went home and looked it up on Google after he... He was, like, fucking serious about it, too. He was angry that I wouldn't believe him about these plants running away from danger. I don't know what the fuck cracked up cartoon he was watching. But I looked on Google for plants that run away from danger all over the place. Underwater plants that react. Underwater plants 
that run from danger, underwater plants that feel pain, underwater plants that are afraid, and all, all this shit. I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find anything like that. And you would think that, you know, somebody who just knows to pull this out against vegans, it would be some kind of common knowledge thing that I just missed out on somehow because I live under a rock, you know. And I really do live under a rock. I don't, I don't, I don't watch a whole lot of news and stuff. I don't even know what's going on with this COVID shit. People say it's coming back or whatever. It's like, what, whatever, man. I just let it run its course. I don't give a fuck anymore, you know. I don't keep up on news because I'm tired of the fear mongering, really, and I'm tired of all this indoctrination shit. Like, oh, drink this because you'll be nice and cool and. Uh, and and you'll have a refined taste and you'll have all the cool rich friends and you'll get all the hot bitches if you drink this oh and this meat look at this hot chick eating a dead body oh don't you want to eat a dead body too and all this dumb shit man all this indoctrination crap <clears throat> it's like no i'm sure she has dragon breath just like every other omnivore i know like most omnivores, their breath just smells terrible to me. It's like, man, please don't get close to me because cause your breath just smells like a, a fucking graveyard full of open graves, you know, on Judgment Day. It's fucking terrible. So anyways, uh, yeah, plants don't feel pain. They're not conscious. They are living. Yeah, that's true. But they don't have any kind of real life experience as far as anybody can tell they don't experience life they just e exist they're alive and they exist but they don't feel or think anything about anything they have one single purpose and that's to grow and reproduce and then die and that's that's all plants do they grow reproduce and die and that's it i know us animals, humans, and non-human animals, um, that's what we do too. We grow, reproduce, and then die. But we do so much more than that. You know that all of us are conscious. You know, you start attacking a smaller creature that's defenseless against you, it'll run. And if it's cornered, it'll try to fight its way out of your hands in order to run away from you. All right. That is consciousness. When Klaus comes up and whines because he wants me to pet him and kiss him on the head and give him some fucking affection, that's consciousness. He wants some love and he wants to be reassured by his dad that he's okay. You know, same thing with Jelly. Me, I'm conscious for sure. And animals are way too similar to us for me to deny them of feeling pain or consciousness. They do. They have an experience. Whereas plants don't. And that's why I think it's uh, important to not only reduce your plants, your plant consumption, but also reduce entirely intentional torture, harm, and suffering against Poor def defenseless creatures. Oh, and here's a bonus one. A lot of uh, people online do this one, right? It's mostly online people that uh, call me a little vegan or a little man or something because I'm vegan, you know. And they think I'm I'm just like some little pipsqueak crybaby that's like, ooh, save the animals and I'm all pale and like weigh 120 pounds and can't lift a fucking piggy pink with 50 pennies in it and shit you know like what exactly makes you so big and bad uh, through paying other men to harm and torture defenseless animals that are enslaved what, what, what exactly about that makes you such a big person? I mean, you don't even have the balls to go and abuse the animal yourself. You Instead, you pay a hitman to do it for you. You know, you, you can't even do it yourself. You pay somebody else. You go to the grocery store and buy 
in a piece of styrofoam with a giant bandage behind it, a piece of rotting carcass, you know? What exactly about that makes you such a big person? If anything, I'm the bigger person because I gave up my addiction to eating rotting flesh because I was just so repulsed by it. Because I have empathy now. You know, and I'm amazed, really. Like, am I a terrible person? Like, why did it take me, you know, three decades, just somewhere around three decades to uh, finally realize and connect it all? You know, I've I've seen vegans that are under 18. It's like, God damn, why, why didn't I get it back then? I've always claimed to love animals, but my actions never matched up with it. You know? And I'm sure my parents in the past may not have been supportive of it, like a lot of parents aren't. And so I would have ended up on that starvation diet that people tell me about. Oh yeah, my 16-year-old nephew tried a, a plant-based diet, you know? They tried being a vegan, but it didn't work out for them too well because their parents just fed them lettuce all the time, and so they got sick and almost died. You know, it's like, oh, wow, what great supportive parents, you know? They didn't even do any fucking research on a goddamn thing for their kid, and they just, here, have some lettuce, you know? So, yeah, anyways, um, I think, if anything, I'm a bigger person for doing all of this. Um, you know, I don't even have to love every animal. I, I've never met a chicken, ever. I've never met a pig. Uh, maybe someday I will go up to my friend's sanctuary and meet some pigs and hang out with them. Uh, I've fed apples to cows when I was really little. You know, those cows probably ended up in the slaughterhouse, poor things. Uh, I've met horses. They're pretty chill. I, I smoked a blunt one time with some horses with my, with my friend from uh, the Four Corners area. Went up and visited him. We were smoking a blunt in a horse stall and, and, uh, the, the horses understood. And, uh, yeah. Horses are cool. Cows are chill, I guess. Um, but I'm sure all of these animals are cool. I don't quite love chickens because I've never had one. I've never uh, got to have a connection with one. But I definitely respect their right to be alive and be left alone and not experience insane suffering uh, just because I want a four-piece chicken meal. Uh, from Church's Chicken or whatever, you know. Now, I respect their right to life and their right to live peacefully. And unfortunately, hundreds of millions of other people in my country uh, don't, don't see that still. You know, they don't believe those chickens should live peacefully. But at least there's, you know, a chicken every other day or so that doesn't have to be brought into a miserable existence because I'm not supporting that industry anymore. For every person that doesn't support those industries makes a huge difference in the animals' lives who are never going to have to know that suffering because they weren't bred into existence, because there wasn't a demand for them to be in the first place. So, um... This one's to all the chickens that I'll never know because they didn't have to be born into a living hell for my enjoyment. Because that's all it is in the end, is enjoyment. It's a hedonistic pleasure that we get from uh, consuming the decaying flesh of, of another animal. It's entirely unnecessary, except in the most severe survival situations. In which case, if I was in a survival situation, um, you know, I couldn't blame myself and I wouldn't expect anybody else to blame me for killing an animal and eating it in order to survive. 
But fortunately for me, I've never been in such a survival situation, and I've never even known anybody else who has been in such a survival situation as that. I think those situations are extremely rare. And the fact of the matter is, we live in civilization today where there are dried beans and dried rice at the very least on every store shelf you know and you can go and get that cheaper and healthier option to meet instead of all those dead bodies that you're putting in in your stomach you know it's terrible for you and it's uh, terrible for the environment. It's terrible for the animals who have to experience that living hell for the very short time we allow them to be on this planet before we shoot them in the head with a bolt gun that's only 90% effective and then slit their throats to let them bleed out. And if they're not dead by the time they get to the boiling hot water that heats up their skin so that we can rip it off of them, well, they'll drown in that boiling pot of water, you know. You know, uh, this is entirely un unnecessary. You don't have to support that. The only reason those industries exist is because you people who still support those industries are paying for it. That's the only reason it exists. You know, and... People tell me, here's another bonus one. People tell me that it's pointless to go plant-based or vegan because, um, because those industries will keep happening anyway because other people are paying for it. Well, the thing is, I'm one person, yeah, but those industries are downsized now by one consumer because of the choices I make. You know, and 1% of the United States is vegan. So that's 3,500,000 people who are now removed from that consumer base. And that's a lot. It may not sound like much, 1%, but when you put it in a figure of how many people that is, that's a huge fucking number. And that's a lot of animals who don't have to be born into a shit existence that we give them. You know, so um, every one person makes a huge fucking difference. Don't think that you don't make a difference and just keep paying for these industries. The best way to vote today is with your dollar. And unfortunately, a lot of our tax dollars are shoveled over to these uh, farmers who bring these animals into a terrible life. Um, in the form of subsidies. And a lot of that goes to lobbying for keeping dumb shit like dairy as part of your daily recommended re daily rec recommendations, right? What you're recommended to consume daily. You know, dairy is not really a uh, a food group. Why in the hell would one species have to drink the breast milk of another species all throughout adulthood? That's just ridiculous. I'm not a baby, and I'm not a baby cow. What would be more normal is me going catty corner across the street to that chick over there that just had a baby and ask her to squeeze her tits into my glass so that I can drink her tit milk. That would be more normal, because at least that milk is coming from my own species. Yes, I'm still not a baby, but at least I got the species right. Anyways, you guys take care. This was kind of a long one. I had to refilm it multiple times because I became so tangential. Actually had to uh, write down a list of points so that I can stay on track and make this a somewhat coherent um, video. Because I'm so passionate about this, I can go off on one subject or one of these arguments for a whole fucking video. But I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves today uh, watching my rant. A whole one hour rant. Man, my rants are getting like, like movie length. You could have watched a whole fucking movie 
by the time this is over. And you chose to be here. Well, I appreciate that. I don't think I'm that interesting, so... What the fuck are you still doing here? Get out of here and uh, go do something more interesting than listening to Zangotti rants. Alright, later guys. Have a good one. And peace, for real.